Hey guys, Geno Zero, how you doing? I hope all is well in YouTube land. <laughs> Whatever part of the world that you are in. Uh, today we are going to render down some beef suet fat or kidney fat. Uh, the reason that we use uh, the suet is uh, we grind it in with our deer meat in the fall during deer season. We grind this in with our deer meat and it adds a really good mild flavor to the deer meat which is usually very lean. This adds some fat content to it and a little bit of juice and makes your ground deer meat, for me anyway, taste delicious and uh, be a little more juicy. That dry out is bad on you if you're making burgers or something like that. Uh, this particular fat is called suet fat. Some folks call it kidney fat. It comes from the inside, the inside cavity around the kidneys. This is from beef. Uh, you can probably only be able to get this at a butcher shop or a slaughterhouse or a processing plant, something like that, to where you can go in and ask specifically for kidney fat or suet. This is not muscle trimmings. Uh, this here is some fat off of a sirloin that we uh, that we trimmed up. You can definitely see there is a difference in the texture of this fat, which is muscle fat, which comes off of the outside of muscles. There's a difference in the texture of this fat than there is of a piece of suet fat. Suet fat is very, very mild and it's just real creamy and it, I just, I like it. The soot is also used in making, uh, like if you're into the survivalist and the prepping stuff, uh, pemmican, which is a really good long-term storage food item. And rendering this fat down does a couple of things. It makes it a little bit more shell stable because in the soot you can see that there's all these little bitty pieces of membrane uh, that are in between each individual little pieces of the fat. So rendering, rendering this fat or melting this fat down will help you strain out uh, those little pieces of this connective tissue. So what we want to do to start is we want to break down all of our soot into as small a pieces as we can and we're just going to put them right here into our crock pot for melting. You'll have a, a lot of it's going to come in big chunks. Just take a, a good knife and cut you off a slab. This, uh, this chunk here has been in the freezer for a little bit, so it's got some discoloration on it. But we're just going to peel out as much as we can of those uh, of that, that membrane and that connective tissue. And we're going to set it aside. A lot of folks use that for all kinds of different stuff. I've heard it's good fish bait. All kinds of stuff. Our chickens are probably going to get it because it's got some good fat on there. And every once in a while there may be a little chunk of pink or a little chunk of meat left on here. But we're just going to break it up like this the best we can. and add it all into our crock pot. Can you see how creamy that is? This stuff works really good in pastries and biscuits and stuff like that. Uh, when you're using vegetable shortening, you can substitute the suet fat for vegetable shortening and it makes a really good, tasty, fluffy pastries. So this is what we're doing. We're gonna get all this stuff broken down. We're gonna take out as much as that membrane or that connective tissue in between the chunks as we can and once we get it all of it done and into the crock pot then we will turn the crock pot on the lowest setting that we have you don't want to boil it you don't want to cook it you don't want to do anything other than just slowly melt the fat and separate it from the rest of that connective tissues so this is going to take a while it is pretty tedious but we will have a good shelf stable uh, fat when we are done and uh, we'll get to the next step here in a little bit so right now all we're doing is cutting this stuff into chunks, breaking it apart, trying to separate as much of this, this membrane as we can, get it out of there, and putting in small pieces into the crock pot. Okay guys, we got a good bit of our soot here uh, in the little bitty pieces. We want the small little pieces for just for ease of melting uh, and rendering. That way you get a more of an even melt. Um, there's still some of these little pieces of this uh, connective tissue and this membrane in here you can pull out. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to set this into the base of our, of our crock pot slow cooker. And we are going to put it on the lowest setting possible, which I think is just a warm. And let it slowly and gently melt and start rendering. It'll probably take most of the night, but that's alright. And we'll get up in the morning and... Uh, see what's going on from there. So right now the next step is very slowly, very evenly 
warm this up and have it melt. So we'll see you guys when we're done with that. Okay guys, we are here the next morning. Uh, this is uh, melted down nicely. You can see what it looks like as it's melting. And all this stuff here is going to be that leftover, all that little leftover connective tissue that was in between, that we showed you in between. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run this through a strainer into uh, a bigger bowl here that we can uh, work with a little easier. And of course the pan is going to be warm, so be careful. And we're just going to run this off in through that strainer so that we will now have rendered Set this aside let it strain out for a second now I forget what this here is called uh, these leftover remnants I don't remember what they're called but I know that they do have several uses our chickens are going to get this batch that ought to make some uh, happy ladies and it'll give them a good little boost in the protein in their diet and we're just going to strain all this off I even hear that that stuff there makes pretty good fish bait too no, I don't know, I've never tried it we may have to try some of it alright, set that aside I had one little chunk come out on me. We want to get that out of there. Doing it, uh, rendering it like this will help keep it a little more stable as far as preserving goes. Uh, when it has all this connective tissues and little meat particles and stuff like that in there, it will go rancid pretty quickly just sitting out at room temperature. Now I've got some mini loaf pans here. And while this is still warm and in liquid form, we're going to pour some into our loaf pans going to make our squares about, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches or so deep. And then we're going to let this sit at room temperature until it is cooled down. And we have our little blocks. Like, a, like I said at the beginning of the video, we're going to be using ours uh, to grind in with our deer meat to add fat and flavor. Um, and any little particles that you see of that, that membrane that you missed, just scoop it out. So now we have it in our low pans, and we're just going to let it sit out and solidify. Um, you can put it in a refrigerator, but I have heard that uh, that is not recommended. Just leave it set at room temperature for a few hours, and it will solidify all the way through. And once we get to that process, uh, once we get to that point, I should say, where it's uh, they're solid and we're going to remove them out of the low pans and store them, then we'll get back with you. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay guys, it's been a couple hours. We're back inside now. It's raining outside. I just took a butter knife and ran it all around the edges of these uh, individual pans here so that we can just take them and dump them out. And these are uh, little blocks of rendered soot fat. Uh, old timers will say that you can take and uh, wrap this in paper, uh, like a butcher paper, and then wrap it in linen or an old cloth or something and just set it right on the shelf in your pantry and it's good for several months. Uh, I'm going to use this, uh, I'm just going to wrap it in parchment and put them back in the freezer and pull them out as I need to uh, because we're going to make more and we're going to be storing ours for quite some time. I'm going to make a batch of pemmican with one of these uh, which is I have some jerky that I left on the dehydrator for way too long, it's way too dry. Uh, but we're going to use this soot fat uh, and make pemmican along with some dried berries which is uh, good for several several years uh, as long as it's stored properly and I'm quite sure you know there's a lot of other uses from uh, everything from leather treatment to uh, you know if you got a high carbon steel blade like I do uh, you know you can use it as a rust inhibitor uh, there's all kinds of uses for this stuff we're going to use it for adding fat content to ground meat and uh, we'll make some pastries and biscuits and stuff with it as well so there you have it this is how we render down soot fat or kidney fat. Uh, this is beef. Uh, you can get it from most of your uh, local processors or butchers. Uh, ask for it and make some of this own. We're going to put this in the freezer. It'll store for a really, really long time now. 
Uh, even on the shelf, it'll, it'll, it'll hold for several months. Uh, in the refrigerator, even longer. We're going to put ours back in the freezer so we can get even longer storage out of it. But uh, I hope this helps. This is just how I do it. We're not any kind of fattyologists or that kind of stuff. We're just regular dudes. And uh, this is how we render and store our soot box. And uh, so I hope this helps. Uh, if you guys have any ideas and any other uh, additional uses for this stuff, please leave them in the comments so that everybody can read them and enjoy and share and learn. And uh, have a great evening. God bless. Me. Buzz, buzz. The end.